Hi, and welcome to this latest immigration law update video. This is a literally a hot off the press video to give you my instant reaction to the Court of Appeal judgment in the Akinsanya case. Akinsanya was the case about Zambrano applications under the EU settlement scheme and the definition within Appendix EU of a person with a Zambrano right to reside as excluding a person with a limited leave to remain under another part of the immigration rules. The claimants were successful in the administrative court before Mr Justice Mostyn and the uh, Secretary of State appealed to the Court of Appeal. Now, if you're watching the football scores on a Saturday afternoon, you might summarise this Court of Appeal judgment as a 1-1 draw. Secretary of State scored one, the claimant scored one, but the claimant wins on the away goals rule. What do I mean by that? Well, let's have a look at the Court of Appeal judgment. I've shared my screen with you. So the facts there sets out how the claimant is a Zambrano carer, was previously gr granted a derivative residence card under the 2006 regulations, but then applied and, and was successful in getting limited leave to remain under Appendix FM uh, because she wanted to access public funds effectively. The legal framework is then set out by the Court of Appeal and the Zambrano jurisprudence. Uh, then the settlement scheme uh, is set out and then the definition section uh, in Annex 1 of Appendix EU at paragraph 19 of the Court of Appeal judgment and the key sentence in section B without leave to enter or remain in the UK unless this was granted under this appendix. There's also a summary of the EEA uh, regulations. Now, it's important to have a look at the issues, uh, and it says at paragraph 34, however, in advance of the hearing below, the Secretary of State accepted that her intention in framing annex, the Annex 1 definition was that it should accurately state the actual right enjoyed by Zambrano carers in the UK. It followed that if the claimant, in fact, enjoyed such a right, notwithstanding the grant of leave to remain, but the, uh, the Secretary of State had, in framing Lim B, proceeded under a misunderstanding, and she accepted that it would be a lawful for her to make her decision on that basis. Paragraph 35, accordingly, as Mr Blundell put it at paragraph 28 of his skeleton argument before us, the only issue before Mr Justice Mostyn was whether the Secretary of State had, in formulating the Annex 1 definition, erred in her understanding of the Zambrano jurisprudence, and B, in Regulation 16 of the 2016 regulations, that is by proceeding on the basis that the Zambrano right did not arise in circumstances with the carer in question had any form of leave to enter or remain. If she had, it was agreed that a decision would have to be quashed and that she would re be required to reconsider the terms of the definition. And Mr Justice Mostyn's judgment is summarised by Lord Justice Underhill at paragraph uh, 36, and he held that a Zambrano right was not extinguished by the existence of a concurrent limited leave to remain. But he held further um, that the formulation in Regulation 16 uh, only excluded those with indefinite leave to remain. Uh, and you can't read Regulation 16 as excluding somebody with limited leave to remain. So the two grounds of challenge by the Secretary of State was first, the effect of the Zambrano jurisprudence, and then secondly, in relation to Regulation 16. And why do I say it was a 1-1 score draw? Well, effectively, the Court of Appeal agreed with the Secretary of State in respect of ground one, but agreed with the claimant in respect of ground two. So ground one was the effect of the Zambrano jurisprudence. Lord Justice Underhill sets out the Secretary of State's case, then set, sets out Simon Cox's case on behalf of the claimant, and then comes to his conclusion. And his conclusion 
to which the other members of the court agreed uh, was that effectively a grant of limited leave to remain was a Zambrano and Zambrano extinguishing factor. It, he says this at paragraph 54, at first sight, there is some force in Mr. Cox's position that a right arising under the EU treaties must exist independently of any domestic rights which report, purport to reproduce it or which are to substantially the same effect. However, that does not, in my judgment, correspond to the analysis of the nature of Zambrano rights adopted by the CJEU. It is clear from the from EDA and NA, two judgments of the Court of Justice, that the court does not regard Zambrano rights as arising as long as domestic law accords to Zambrano carers the necessary right to reside or to work or receive social assistance. To put it another way, where those rights are accorded, what I have called the Zambrano circumstances, do not obtain. He doesn't believe this is inconsistent with the Court of Appeals judgment in Sana and particularly the judgment of Lord Justice Elias and says, and this is important, paragraph 57, I thus prefer Mr Blundell's submissions. I should say, however, that does not as such answer the question whether the Secretary of State misdirected herself in framing the definition in the EUSS. It depends what she was attending to achieve. Notwithstanding the analysis above, the fact remains that if at any time a Zambrano carer loses their right to reside as a matter of domestic law, the Zambrano right will arise, assuming that is that the effect of the carer leaving will be uh, that the EU citizen child will also have to do so. That's, that's the compulsion point, which is at the heart of Zambrano. Zambrano is always waiting in the wings, and, and so long as the Zambrano circumstances obtain, the carer can never be put in a position where their residence is unlawful. If the Secretary of State's purpose in what, wanting to understand the ju Zambrano jurisprudence was indeed to restrict the rights under the EUSS to people who, whose right to reside at the relevant dates directly depended on Zambrano, then her approach was consistent with the EU case law. But if her intention was to extend those rights to all those carers who re whose removal would result in an EU citizen dependent having to leave UK, then the exclusion of carers who currently had leave to remain on some other basis would evidently be inconsistent with that purpose. What the Secretary of State's purpose was is not something that this court can answer, but fortunately it's not necessary for us to do so because of my conclusion on ground two, with which I understand Lord Justice uh, Bean and Lady Justice Andrews to agree. So ground two is the construction of Regulation 16. Now, the definition of an exempt person in Regulation 16.7 included somebody with indefinite leave to remain, but it said nothing about those with limited leave to remain. And the claimant contends, paragraph 59, final sentence, the claimant contends that persons with limited leave are accordingly not exempt persons and by virtue of paragraph 1b are entitled to a derivative right to reside alongside their leave to remain so long as they satisfy the criteria under one of paragraphs 2 to 6 of regulation 16, the different derivative rights to reside. The Court of Appeal agree with the claimant there's some discussion about gold plating and whether the secretary, when the Secretary of State uh, uh, gives greater rights than, than she has to effectively. Um, but they say the language is too clear in Regulation 16. It only excludes those with indefinite leave to remain. And you can't read into the regulations as excluding those with limited leave. And they would agree with Mr. Justice Mostyn that that would completely change the scope and meaning of Regulation 16. So they reject the Secretary of State's argument in relation to Ground 2. So here's your 1-1, one, one, your score on behalf of the claimant. And what did I say? The away goal rule applies, so the uh, claimants win. So as the result of them rejecting Ground 2, ultimately, notwithstanding the conclusion on Ground 1, the Court of Appeal dismiss the Secretary of State's appeal. 
And the Secretary of State now has to undertake her reconsideration of the definition in Appendix EU. The Court of Appeal somewhat modify the terms of the declaration in the order of Mr Justice Mostyn, and they say the Secretary of State erred in law in her understanding of Regulation 16 when providing her definition in Appendix EU and including B that a person with limited leave to remain is excluded. So now the Secretary of State has to proceed with reconsidering Appendix EU. Nothing in this judgment should be taken as expressing any view about how the Secretary of State can or should amend the terms of the EUSS as to which we heard no argument. So as I say, it's a bit of a one-one draw. The Secretary of State now has to look again and to see what her purpose is. Is her purpose to properly represent uh, what is the Zambrano right to reside and limited leave to re remain is a Zambrano extinguishing factor, or is it the wider purpose for to expand the definition to include anybody who has a Zambrano basis of claim, notwithstanding the fact that they may have limited leave to remain? That's got to be now considered by the Secretary of State. So where does that leave everybody? Because there's lots of people who've made applications or some people who are waiting to see what the Court of Appeal decided in order to make applications. I still think it's probably worth putting in applications under Appendix EU if you're somebody who potentially has a Zambrano right to reside, even if you had limited leave to remain. Uh, don't let your limited leave to remain lapse. The Obviously, the Secretary of State may now formulate in similar terms to this uh, and it means that people with limited leave to remain can't rely on, on Appendix EU but I think unless you apply you, you won't be considered so as long as you're aware of the dangers involved. Now this is not legal advice, uh, this is not a full analysis of this judgment because I'm recording this on the afternoon of the 25th of January, the day the judgment was handed down. So please uh, read the judgment for yourself, consult a, a legal advisor. As I say, this is not legal advice, but this is my initial analysis of this judgment and is for information purpose only. Thank you very much. I hope this is helpful uh, to you. Uh, do, as I say, have a look at this judgment more fully uh, and we watch this space to see what the Secretary of State does.